Hey guys, what's up? So, um, I want you guys or tell you guys about the story of me getting scammed on Cash App. Um, I do this kind of stuff not on purpose. Well, this was actually just me being too nice and too vulnerable. Uh, this is who I am. I'm like a nice, caring guy. I would literally just throw myself in front of you for a stranger and risk my own life. That's the kind of person I am. Um, just I have a big heart. That's you know, and fortunate people in the world take advantage of people like that. So I'm gonna show you guys just uh, hopefully it's a rather quicker than a uh, longer story of how I got scammed cash app. Um, it is three o'clock in the morning. I have to get up in like five hours. So I, I kind of want to make this quick. All right. So pretty much, um, I'm starting here just, so I won't forget the series screenshot. Um, I did leave a note. I mean, leave like a, pretty much a review on, um, the app store and cash app did respond. And let me show you actually their response. Um, is that it? Hold on. Yeah, this is a cash app response guys right here. So, Right here, guys. There's nothing smart if you want for you. Blah, blah, blah. Your camera's closed. Fish, fish, uh, frustrating situation. You zero terms of service. So pretty much, I actually had an old account, guys. That got banned as well. Um, same actually thing is that you dispute something with Cash App. Um, actually, before I got my money back. I guess Cash App didn't like that. I disputed my bank and I got my money back. So they pretty much like banned my account or like pretty much disabled my account. And they said, oh, you broke our terms of service. It's kind of the bull crap that Cash App likes to use. So I created a new account and never had any issues because nothing else, asked, nothing else ever happened until now. Um, I did willingly send someone money, but they were supposed to pay me back, so they did scam me. And the worst thing Cash App can do, guys, the, I mean, the least Cash App can do is just, you know, look into it, investigate, and, and that's it. it. You know, the least it can do is actually, like, you know, ban or terminate her. You know, if you can't get the money back, I kind of understand. But at least terminate, you know, and ban her account, the person who scammed me. Instead... Cash App responds to me. You know, I'm trying to dispute it with them. They say, oh, you broke the terms of service, so now we're disabled on your account. So the person who gets scammed out of the money gets terminated. Does that does that sound right or fair to anyone in this in this world? Like, imagine, like, a merchant. Imagine someone stealing your money, and you go to the police, and they, they just don't want to help you at all. And they just say, like, you know, screw off. That's pretty much how it felt. And that's why I left a comment, a review on Cash App, you know, on App Store. Of how crap and trash their stuff service is like just get a call and then like literally i was talking to someone saying that's not right how can you do that you're not going to investigate and then he literally just hanged up on me like literally hanged up on me and then i asked for a manager he said he can't even give me a manager i'm like what kind of company and business is this that cash app you know you're you know what cash up to a million probably billion freaking company a billionaire company or multi-millionaire company and they can't give me a manager and then he had to give me an, a manager to email me back which i'm gonna show you guys the emails in a couple minutes so that happened and let me get, begin with the situation. This person right here, I don't even care. Her name is Dusty Belfort, right? Seem legit because most scammers, like, they're not actually, like, who they are on Facebook and their Facebook pages might just start and all that. She had a Facebook page for, for years, okay? So she might be where, like, you know, um, she's the kind of person that just maybe need the money and was legit. So the scenario is that she needed money for gas. She was out and she said, never ever happens. I FaceTime her, she sent me her uh, license and she was even willing to send me her social and FaceTime me when she was in the cab and all that kind of stuff. And she, she swears she paid me back when she, gets, when she gets home. And it was late at night, I'd get up early to pick up my, my sister and my mom from the airport. I had, you know, I was just, you know, I was in my head that night. And I was like, either I'm gonna go to sleep knowing that someone actually could, will, you know, really need my help. Or, you know, I might can help them and I, I feel bad. Or if I help them, I'm, I'm going to be worried about getting the money back. And I probably shouldn't have helped them, but I'm just too nice. And I was like, you know, let me actually believe somebody and give someone the benefit of the doubt. So I sent her money. I sent her 40 bucks, okay? I know it's not a, a lot of money. I was like, let, let me just, you know, if $40 can help, really help her, then yeah. I mean, we just started talking that same night. And um, she eventually did ask me for money. So it's probably why she messaged me to begin with because she asked me for money. And, you know, I, I took precautions. Like, I FaceTimed her. I messaged her. I literally, like, was messaging the whole time and trying to get her story to make sense. And it, it kind of made sense. Like, she even said she had no other you – know, I mean, it could have been fake, obviously, but she had no other family. She just she grew up in foster care, and she even FaceTimed me. It was legitimately her. Like, she, you know, she, a lot of things were adding up. And I, I, I guess I wanted to believe that she really needed help and that, you know, she was telling the truth and that I could help her. You know, even just send her some money. She, I mean, when she gets back – she said she didn't have a credit card. It was at you know at her house. She was with someone and they left her at the house because she's um, she works for this I think I think like health insurance, insurance company, which was over a ninety two year old man's house. And you know it was like three o'clock in the morning. I just wanted to, I just wanted to help someone and believe that people are good. But I got scammed. I mean so far I mean it's been like five or six. It's been like a week and I still have not got any money from her yet. 
Um, and she swears still that she came back. She doesn't block me, so it's a little weird, you know. And she wanted twenty more dollars for her, her son's heart medicine. Apparently, the dad, which is like, well, I guess the dad's her kids because she has like three kids, like two, four, and like five or something like that. And apparently, the dad of the kids is deceased. He passed away. We died, whatever. Which is kind of sad. And I really felt for this person. Like, you know, apparently her foster parents, when she was young, she had, you know, she guess parents gave her up. Parents, her mom was like a drug addict. Uh, dad, she, you know, her mom and dad she hardly ever sees in her life. Um, so she had foster care when she was younger. And apparently the foster, her foster parents abused her. So I really felt for someone like this. I mean, she FaceTimed me. She came in line, but like it, it all seemed like she was legit. She was even swearing FaceTime. She paid me back. She seemed pretty cool. Nice. I mean... I, I mean, usually I'm, I'm decent at picking up people or they're just BSing me or some stuff was a little weird because um, she was like, she had to call this certain ta this certain cab um, which her friend was involved in and that they still charge her and that, you know, it was like a $100 ride and she only had $40 on her or $60 on her um, and then, you know, um, because she was like an hour from her house and she said that they only, she said that they only charge cash and I was like, but I sent you money to cash app. So it was a little weird, like, but I would say, like, 90% of it, the story did add up and, like, seem legit. And just for someone to get $40, she was going, like, really, really, really hard. Like, you know, like, really, really, like, seemed like she was legit. And I don't know, maybe she is legit. Maybe she actually paid me back when she gets paid. But, like, so far, it's just been BS. She's supposed to pay me back when she got home and she fell asleep. And then apparently she can't pay me back because on her card, if she's, like, the, you know, I guess she has some kind of card she's telling me about. Where she owes money on it, so she can't pay me back. Unless I give her $20 more for her, heart, her son's heart medicine. Which brings your balance up to zero dollars, and then she pay me back. I'm like, well, it's twenty dollars. You can get can't, you can't get twenty dollars from anybody. So it all seemed like really, really messed up. You know, like really, really weird. It's already been a week, so by obviously by next week, I would know if she's legit or not because she would got paid. Um, so as right now, it's a scam. So we talked a little bit. How are you? Blah blah blah. She starts telling about, oh, you know, I send you a picture of my license, my address. I, I need someone to help me. She, you know, I please. I really need help just one time, you know, to see it, I go to foster care, um, please just, you know, risk it, I'm just, I'm pleased, you know, like, she made me really believe, like, that, you know, there's still, I know there's some good people, legit people out there, but it's really hard to find people like that, you know, it's 99% of the time, it's probably gonna be some kind of scam, and she really made me believe, yeah, four, three, no one knows she has, and she needs to get home, apparently it's the only person that's watching them is her uncle, and her uncle would throw them out of the house in a heartbeat, so I, I really felt for her, and I wanted to help her and do something good. And forty dollars was like it's not like it's a thousand dollars; it's forty dollars. I mean, if she's gonna do all this to scam me out of forty dollars, and it is what it is. You know, I'll try to fight it. I'll, I'll dispute my bank, dispute it with Cash App, but in the end, I just you know you want to do you want to believe in the good in people, but that's not always true, unfortunately, right? Uh, she's telling me she lived. And that was a little weird. She told me she lived in Manhawk, and then like I did like a search on her, you know, and then like she was in like. She's from a totally different state, so it was a little weird. And she's like, oh, I grew up there, but I don't live there anymore. So, you know, I mean, I don't know. It seemed like, you know, okay, maybe that's true. She had three kids, give me a chance. She's not trolling. She's, you know, she starts FaceTiming, starts calling. She sends me her, her license, which I'm not going to show you that. Um, and then she sends me a video, and, like, she FaceTimes me, and that's really her. And then, you know, she sends me a license and all that. And then, I'm like, you know, even screenshot your phone, make sure it's dead. And, like, I did a Google, like, reverse search on this. I could not find anything like this before. 3%. It is a little generic, which, like, gave me a little red flag. Being like, okay, it's generic. That is a little weird. That's generic. You know, because, like, you have nothing else out of here. So, that was a little weird. But then, like, I literally, like, did a Google search on this. I could not find any images like this. I even searched up, like, 3% battery iPhone. And I could not find anything like that. So, like, I really thought, like, you know... It was legit. I tried doing, like, extra precautions. I was like, you know what? Maybe she actually is telling the truth. I couldn't find, like... You know, she went, like, whatever way to fake this if she wasn't telling the truth. And maybe she was, like, being legit, but now she just has the money and she doesn't want to pay me back. That could be the case as well. I don't really know, 100%. All I know is that she still has not blocked me. And, you know, I haven't given her any more money. I told her I'm not sending her $20. I'm done sending her money until she pays me back. So, maybe she is, like... Yeah, she keeps saying that I would have my, all my money if I were to send her $20. Which, that didn't sound right at all. So, I'm... I'm some of it's really weird, and other parts of it is like it, it can make sense. Um, but that's really it. I don't know what she even said. Where's Ellie? Eli? I have no clue who she's talking about. I asked her to get my money back, and that was two days ago. She never responded to me. It's July 3rd. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty much where we're at. Um, just so you guys that um, Cash App sucks, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm going to go to here. I did request the money back from her, but I did not get anything yet. So. I don't know why it's taking so long to load today. Okay. I don't know what's going on why it's taking so long to load. But uh, there you go. So, this center $40. I requested a refund. And obviously still has not sent me 
jack crap back. So, um, yeah, that's really it, guys. I'm just going to show you um, pretty much, like, the messages between me or the emails between me and this the Cash App person. Like, apparently, it's the Cash App manager because he's the one. I did dispute it through Cash App. I think my Cash App is disabled now, but let me show you the message between me and this Cash App guy. Yeah. All right, so... All right, so he got me, he's, oh, Vernon, I need this information from you. You know, I give him the information from him, right? And he's, oh, I need this information from you on manager. Because, like I said, he got, managed to contact me through uh, Cash App. Um, so then he says, okay, we need this information from you. Okay, some information. And then he needs, and then he says, oh, um, make sure I need, uh, you know, five, just like a whole day and like 10 messages, emails. Just make sure I own the account, which I keep telling him I do own the account. I do own the account. All right, so, um. Yeah, he was like, oh, I need to make sure you have everything, everything's legit, and all that stuff, and all that stuff, and I sent all the information back, um, I answered all his questions, and I'm still waiting for him to respond, like, he's just trying to verify it's me, and then he was saying before that he couldn't help me at all, he literally was saying that, oh, where is it at, oh, you know, I sent his account, uh, and then he, he was saying before that he couldn't help me at all, so, it's just really poor, it's, it's awful, um, but yeah, that's pretty much what happened, guys. If, you know, in case, I mean, I guess lesson learners that if someone does or you request some money from you guys and you do not know them, don't send them money. I mean, like, it's, what do you, I mean, literally, like, worst comes, I mean, best comes to bad, it's going to send the money back. I mean, but 99% of the time, you're going to be scammed. So, not worth it. Um, learn from me. People, even like that, seem literally, like, 100% legit and that they do extra stuff and, like, you know, they seem like a good person. It's not always the case. And I'll definitely give you guys updated if I actually do get paid back. Um, uh, just comment down below being like, do you ever get paid back? You know, and I'll let you guys know what, whatever actually came out of the situation because it's still ongoing with the dispute and the dispute with my bank is still ongoing and still talking to her about trying to get the money back. So um, I'll let you guys know what happens in the end. Uh, just comment down below, um, you know, and I'll let you guys know. But yeah, other than that, peace out, guys.